I'm Natalie Junge from Hamburg. Um, I'm currently taking a break from my business. Um, I'm a business advisor focusing on preparedness, crisis preparedness. Um, you should think that's exactly what I do during a pandemic, but pandemic is an actual crisis and preparedness, it's too late, let's face it. Um, currently, I'm um, a researcher in the parliamentary inquiry committee in my hometown Hamburg, where we are concerned with a massive tax fraud scheme. I hope we will be done maybe in the second half of the year so I can go back to my business. It was a real challenge the first month being so close to people who are filthy rich and I use filthy on purpose. Um, they're really rich and still steal from the taxpayers. Um, I had to work hard on my money mindset during the first month. Now I'm fine with it. I'm a maverick and I'm also a ruler and romantic, kind of a gang here. Yeah. So the first round of questions, um, and Kira, we're going to start with you, Kira, then Natalie, then Deborah, Gemma, Kim, and then Helen, you're going last on this one, is when you got the quiz results for SMA, was it a surprise or is this something that you've always known about yourself that you like to break rules? Have people, you know, told you or have you gotten negative feedback from it or, you know, was it a surprise or did you just go, yeah, that is me? Yeah, um, I also did the test twice. And when I did it the first time, I had really high scores on the accumulator, which is really funny, it totally dropped. It's now my second lowest um, archetype. And I can't remember what I thought about the Maverick. I know that I always felt kind of like a rebel, but fighting it, I have never been happy long time for a long time in jobs, three months, the first three months, then you know it, then it gets bored. Nobody listens to all your brilliant ideas because everyone is longer and more accomplished than you. And um, I really hate wasting my lifetime uh, on stupid people. So yeah, the maverick kind of came as an, yeah, a permission to be just the way I am. And as soon as I allowed my maverick to take over and accept it. Um, yeah, the accumulator dropped. I figured that I had to learn the skills of the accumulator, but it was not my, um, my personality type. I totally gave up on being responsible. No, not totally, of course. I and mean, you have to be responsible as an adult, but um, this picture I had of me as being the reliable, the one everybody can count on and being able to deal with every crisis. Yeah, I can do that, but why would I? Don't get yourself into a mess, then I don't have to manage your crisis. And that's why I'm still stuck with preparedness. So yes, um, having it more easy, having more fun with it all and accepting the thing that I always struggled with as my superpower that is really what came up, um, accepting the maverick side. Um, so the next question, and I've put it in the thing too, of um, I want you to think back to your childhood. So Kira, you've already mentioned too that, you know, your, was it your mom or your grandma that called you Miss Missy? And I want to hear like even more about this stuff, right? So we're going to start with Natalie. And I want you to think like, where has this come out? Because for some of you, I'm hearing it's not necessarily about rebellion. For some of you, it's about being bold or courageous or, um, you know, seeing things that don't work or being extra or um, sparking a flame in something. So think back to some of this comes out really early, you know, like at preschool, you go, no, this is stupid. I'm not going to do it. Or you led a rebellion in your primary school because of, I don't know, some stupid rule. Um, and then the the thing that came out too, what, what are your family, did they have a nickname for you? Did they ever say things like, you know, it's your way or the highway? Um, or, you know, have you can't have your cake or eat it too. So, or were you called stubborn or, you know, just where did it come back? So just think about that from, from a really a young age. Where did that little baby maverick come in? We're doing Natalie first, then Deborah, Gemma, Kim, Helen, and then Kiri, your last on that one. Oh my gosh, should I burst into tears, just move on? 
um, because I think I was a suppressed maverick, um, which is really ironic because my mom used to say that one could count on one thing, and that was that I would say no. But from all the things I know about my childhood is the one thing that stood out was that I was totally adapted to things. I never felt that I was a troublemaker. Um, when my parents got a divorce, my brother stopped going to school. And I remember admiring him so much for having the courage to show how he was suffering by throwing away basically everything, something I would never have done. I went to school, I did my A-levels, I went to university, I had my wild face, I quit university, and I went through all sorts of shit, but um, it was my brother who was the maverick when we were children, and I was the one who had to function, or I was functioning, I can't really say that I had to, um, which is something that totally makes sense um, in the context of my high score with the accumulator earlier, and that is what I meant when I say that I had to learn this, but, and I also had to give myself permission to let it go and step into the wild side. Ironically, I often hear that I am selfish and that I only do what I like while I feel that I'm constantly compromising um, and, and holding myself back, but that's another story. So yeah, as a child, I was a first in many things. I was the first child to go to um, high school, etc., and that kind of made me stand out, but I hated it with every fiber of my being. I just wanted to be like everyone else and I wanted to be liked as everybody else. And I had no idea of um, that being different could be something cool and something to be enjoyed and something to show off. So yeah, that's, oh, I made it through without crying. Um, that's my never kitty story. Where is this showing up in your business? So here's the question and I'll just put it in the, in the comments is like, how is your maverick showing up and sabotaging your business? But what was the aha around SMA for that? And so I've got a couple of things here of like, you know, have you burnt it all down? Have you gone into risky spaces? Um, that Gemma, what you were saying about wanting to test the roller coaster, you know, which was just perfect for a maverick, right? Because it's like the comfort of the roller coaster. Um, or is it going... I am not going to do that, even though it would be useful for me. So going to that extreme or just going, that's stupid or worrying about the roles, like what you just said, Kira, there about, I want to do things differently. I don't want to do the same role as anyone else. So like, where is that, where is that sabotaging you in, in your business specifically? And, um, you know, were there any ahas that you got around that, that, that shifted things? And Deborah, you're, you're first on this one and then Gemma. And then go around and then Natalie, you're last on that one. Uh, that was a lot that sounded familiar. Um, I think my biggest sabotage is when my ruler and my maverick get together and decide that everything I like to do must be monetized and everything I know must be part of my business. And that kills me. I'm not so much a in burning bridges, I'm more in tweaking things constantly. And people always ask me, okay, what's the next big thing? What are you up to now? And haven't you just started this other thing? And why are you now doing this? And I really need to stop that. Um, I thought that this break I'm currently taking from my business is a good idea. And um, as knowing that I'm going back to my business. I have now started to, to think about the next week. Um, and I was quite happy the last few days when I found that there won't be a tweak. I created what I wanted to create. I just have to stop myself from tweaking it even more. And um, finding ways to, to do all the things I like to do, do to learn, to study, um, yeah, to educate myself outside of my business and not taking it all in um, is one way to do that. And um, 
Uh, oh God, I can spend weeks with thinking about cool names and ways how to describe what I do, but of course in ways that appeal to me and never to the people that who I'm actually speaking to. Nobody knows what I'm doing because I'm so creative with my names. And that's totally not helpful. I totally have to stop that. That's why I introduced myself as a business advisor tonight, because that's that boring, but people know what I do, rather, kind of. Um, and I, it needs some tweaking before I go actually, actually go back, back into my business. I know that, but this, doing these things, as Denise says in the program, that work for others, but are boring. I'm allowed to do them. It's okay to do them and um, focus on being special content-wise and in the way I work and not necessarily in the way I phrase my work. Um, I think that is my next big thing. <laughs> oh, okay, we also see. Um, no, I know I'm not, but I so often feel like it and um, it gets boring easily. I've been teaching for 10 years management in university and somebody wrote repurposing in the, in the chat a few minutes ago. And that's one thing. I have 10 years of material of all sorts of modules because, because I am bored easily. I take on new models every semester. So I basically taught everything there is in management. But do you think I created a program yet for higher paying customers? Of course not. Why? Because repurposing something I did for students is, I don't know, unethical, boring, too easy. So there's a lot of things I have to do. Um, and I think that was it. And this weird way of seeking approval from people I really don't give a damn about. I don't know. I think that's some leftover BS from, from childhood or earlier years when I needed more support. Um, that's definitely another thing I will have to look into. So yes, that's it. Too many weird ideas and um, I need to find ways to place them and, and not take them into my business. Oh man, I wish we could just talk for hours more. Honestly, this is, there's so many places that we could go here. I, you know, I want to know, yeah, we're just talking then in the threads about like having to do short-term stuff because you get resentful or you get, feel like you're in handcuffs for having to do those long-term things. And that's the power of the maverick, right? Is that you can sell anything, doesn't mean you should. You can do lots of things, doesn't mean you should. But the thing that I guess I want to leave you guys with too is the power of technology is so good for Mavericks, you know, because maybe as a kid, you know, you, oh God, so many of you like youngest in the class because you got bumped up. So you were the different one. And the cool thing is now with the internet is that we can go and scoop up all of those different ones from all around the world. There's literally, you know, no limitation to who you can serve. And we can use that as an amplification and we can use the automation to support all of those things so you can create that freedom, but without literally burning everything down and, you know, finding those short term uh, team members or batching things in your in your high energy times, but you need the infrastructure behind you to, to do it. And so when we talk about simplicity, maybe it is things like the all in one Kajabi thing. So then you don't have the complication of lots of things. Um, so there's a lot of ahas there around, you know, just finding that way so you don't have to do fuck you to the funnels and burn it all down. It's like, I'll do it, but it's on my terms and it's got to support me, not the other way around. So there's so many nuances there around team and um, systems that will help us, because I'm a maverick second, um, to help us thrive, not double down on our self-sabotage and and, and create those unhealthy patterns. So I got so much out of this. I hope you guys did too. All right, I've got to go. Thank you. Honestly, thank you so much for your time and your generosity, guys, and your ideas and your like, act, you know, just activating energy. I just appreciate it so much. And I can't wait to see you guys in SMA.
So, are you a ruler, a connector, or a maverick? Hang on, maybe you're more of a romantic or a celebrity. Take the money personality quiz right now and find out which of the eight money archetypes you are. And then I'm gonna teach you how to profit from your strengths and make money in your business based on your natural personality. Click below and find out more.